Hello students, good morning. Today we are going to start our electrical circuits basics. Before that, myself, Dr. C. H. Adeya, Senior Lecturer in Electrical and Electronics Engineering at Government Polytechnic, Usnabad. This topic regarding to third semester students. The first chapter, Kritcha plus and star delta transformations. The today topic is basics. Now, what are the objects? On completion of this period, you would be able to know electrical network introduction, electrical circuit, active elements and passive elements, active circuit and passive circuit, differentiation of active and passive circuits. And finally, what is the node and loop in a circuit? These are the topics we are going to cover in this class. Now, the classification of materials on the basis of free electrons. Before going to our topic, what do you mean with the electrical circuits? I think in first year level, in first semester and second semester, you have studied BEG regarding to electrical subjects in that you know the ohms laws conductors insulators semiconductors and different simple elements generally used in our electrical engineering system now you can see once again recall what we have learned in first year level the materials which allows electrons very freely to flow are known as conductors. In electrical engineering, there are the three materials or elements run the show. Those are one, conductors, insulators and semiconductors. These three fellows run the total show of electrical and electrons engineering paths. Here, what is the conductors, what is the insulators, what is the semiconductors, what is the characteristics, what is the configurations already you have seen in physics up to 10th class level. At the same time, you have seen in first year level also. Let us recollect what we have learnt in previous sections. Let us see first the main element is the conductor. The materials which allows electrons very freely to flow are known as conductors. Examples silver, copper, aluminum. That means all metals are good conductors. As we know that the conductor which allows flow of electrons through it is known as the conductors and does not allow flow through it is known as the insulators. But in conductors also we have seen the high resistive materials and low resistive materials and superconductive materials also we have seen. That means the conductor's characteristics based on resistance present in that material. As we know that a very good conductors are platinum, silver, copper, aluminum, gold, generally used in our electrical applications. For a specific sophisticated measurement equipments, silver terminals also we are using. Sometimes we are going to use gold 
coated gold metals also were connected for the terminals based on its importance nowadays in distribution lines in transmission lines we are using aluminum conductors in domestic and in industrial purpose all wiring systems are made with copper wires and you are very familiar the difference between copper conductors and aluminum conductors in first year level copper is a very good conductor but cost is more we cannot use this one so these conductors are intended to flow of our electrons flow of electrons is nothing but current these conductors direct the charge particles in a predefined way or path it avoids entering up this charge particles to undesired path at that condition we are going to keep that is known as some controlling or we can say is the tropic pulse in the tropic pulse or control the flow of charged particles and direct the vehicles in a required path similarly here the conductors are charged particles are the conductors flows in a conductors and the charged particles may not allow either direction by using insulators so you you know all these basics in school level also now what is another thing here is a copper conductor you well known and sometimes we can use the materials which do not allow electrons freely through it are known as insulators it may not be allowed that is known as the insulators for example wood plastic ceramic are generally used in our electrical engineering and another one is the, the materials which allows a small number of electrons through it are known as semiconductors the example is the germanium silicon carbon materials you can see so semiconductors are silicon and germanium generally used in our electronics and electrical engineering systems these are made all uh, today basic ics integrated circuits so these are the three materials roll the total entire electrical engineering system conductors which allows the electrons insulators which oppose the electrons semiconductors it some based on the conditions it will allows and oppose the electrons as we know that in basic level the every metal has the valency electrons outermost orbit consists of if more number of electrons and that valency electrons jumps to conduction band then it act as a good conductor even if presents the valency electrons in outermost orbit if it unable to jump the into the conduction band then it act as a insulators if external energy is given to valency electrons to jump from valency outermost valency band to conduction band then we can say that is known as a semiconductors that means the energy is required to jump from valency band to conduction band to overcome the the forbidden gap so based on this one we classified conductors insulators and semiconductors you are very, very familiar now the classification of materials in terms of valency electrons what are the valency electrons the element outermost orbit consists of free electrons 
these free electrons and consist in valence band and a conduction band in between there is a gap between forbidden gap what are the whatever the present in valency band free electrons that has to be jump from valence band to conduction band then it becomes a good conductor so what is the definition here the materials in which the number of electrons in the outermost orbit valence electrons is less than the four is known as the conductors the conduct the valence electrons less than the four we can say is the conductors these materials usually are all metals and for example so sodium magnesium and aluminum is example we can see this figure also these are aluminum conductors the copper conductors generally we can observe day to day life so that means the valence electrons the consist less than four electrons these in this materials aluminum and copper sodium magnesium and coming to the the materials in which the number of electrons in the outermost orbit is more than the four is known as the insulators if valence electrons more than the four it becomes the insulators less than the four it becomes the good conductors now more than the four electrons then it act as a good insulator what are the examples so these materials usually a non metals so for example it may be gas sulfur gas nitrogen gas neon gas plastic wood and ceramic different non metals now we can see the figure this is a one cable now we can see so this is a the pvc polyvinyl chloride material pvc vinyl poly pv polyvinyl chloride material and this is a red color and uh, yellow color and blue color is also insulators sheath we can see this is the sheath this is the insulating plastic material and these are the conductors so here three conductors are insulated each other with help of the insulators now not only this one generally we can this we can say this the cables and you can see this is a neon lamp the gas inside the lamp is the neon it is a insulating material so two electrodes close to each other but is not physically contact but when supply is given to this two then the air gap between the two contacts in between there is a neon gas now due to the neon gas it will gives the glows that is the neon is the inert gas through which the electrons try to flow then it will gives the some glow we can observe this is a indicating lamps in our switch boards and sometimes you can observe the neon gas also used in uh, before uh, in front of uh, hotels hoarding purpose we are generally used this neon lamps okay inside the the tube inside they are using the neon gas the based on the chemicals it colors changes so these are the insulators the insulators which has the more than the four electrons in outermost orbit at the same time which cannot allow the flow of electrons through it the examples are the these materials now coming to the another family that is known as the semiconductors the materials in which the number of electrons in the outermost orbit is exactly four is known as the semiconductors the valence electrons less than 4 conductors at 4 exactly semiconductors more than 4 it becomes a insulators now in semiconductors the valence electrons are exactly 4 half of the outermost orbits now it has both metals and non metals properties semiconductors has two 
have, have two properties at, that is a conductor's properties and insulator properties. It behaves based on the conditions. Its property lies between the conductors and insulators. For good examples, the silicon and germanium are the topest materials in the field and carbon also the one type of the semiconductor materials. The silicon and germanium are the good semiconductor materials. Now, we are days every latest electronic gadget is made with of these semiconductor materials. Due to the invention of this semiconductor material, the size of the all electronic gadgets reduced to micro level and it may reduce to nano level also it is possible in future due to the these two fellows one is a silicon another is a germanium. So you know the you can see the figure this is a silicon material so the 14 then value and the material is this silicon. Silicon is nothing but sand just you are aware of the river sand but in the one type of the sand and germanium you can see the this is the one type of the material and carbon you know well known co carbon materials these three are dominating dictating entire universe for all cultures so is nothing but the good conductors are the first bench of in your classroom the students who are sitting in front of classroom in past benches those students sitting are known as uh, good conductors good behavior sincere students the students which sit at the back benches known as the, the bad nothing but bad conductors nothing but insulators and in between past benches and lost benches in between there is a rows in that rows those are known as the semiconductors you can observe you can observe the past bench fellows good good and uh, academic and uh, students those are perfect in studies they become maximum in our India a civil servant IAS, IPS, IRS topmost jobs they become the collectors, commissioners but a lost bench fellows those unable to follow this study techniques they become they drop out the studies they become normal life after future whereas in middle people they will study at the same time they will behave as a lost bench characteristics they will become the now dominating people in the society for example politicians now what is happening this middle people these semiconductors dominating conductors and dominating insulators similarly the politicians dictating the civil service fellows is at the dictating the lost bench fellows they become the local leaders gundas and some disturbed persons so this two germanium and silicon is the very two metals they becomes the dictating entire total universe for latest technology okay now what i have seen the what is a conductor conductor is nothing but it's the allows the charge particles through it it has the valence electrons less than four a good examples of all metals silver copper platinum and second family the l which the charge particles does not allow through it is known as the insulators and at the same time the valency electrons above the four electrons 
examples are the all plastic non metals like the plastic wood some chemicals and the third one is the semiconductors which can allow the flow of charged particles through it based on the conditions one direction it allows and another direction it will oppose good example is the diode IN4007 simple diode generally you can observe so one direction it allows the only one way path in a tropic signal the other direction if comes there is a penalty similarly in diode allows only one direction flow of the anode to cathode only flow of charged particles if cathode to anode does not allow it shows the infinity resistance and this semiconductors has the valency electrons exactly 4 in outermost orbit example are the germanium and silicon so these are the things now you can see the ic's motherboard if you are observing any electronic gadget you can see the ic's this all ic's are made with of these semiconductor devices now i think you have some idea now electrical network what do you mean with the electrical network the network the combination of various electrical elements connected in a systematic manner is called an electric network what is the definition the combination of various electrical elements what are the elements in our electrical engineering these are resistors inductors and capacitors are the basic three elements so electrical elements at the same time and source is the batteries and various electrical elements are the whether it is a load or source load is the resistance load inductive load capacitive load and source is the battery or generator these are all connected in a systematic way that is known as the electrical circuits the combination of various electrical elements connected in a systematic manner is called an electric network you can observe here what is the electric circuit here is a one circuit you can see this is a source battery and where is the this is a load this is a load this is a load nothing but it is a resistive materials it connected so battery positive terminal is connected to the one load and another is connected to the series here and not series and this is connected to the open it is open and is connected here it connected negative that means now what is happening here what about the current leaving from the positive terminal and coming to the at negative terminal then it is known as a one circuit electric circuit okay now you can see the examples of the elements resistors resistors capacitors and inductors and batteries now you can see the this side source side the source side you can see it and this one now what is this one this is equivalent to source batteries by this 1.5 battery or 3 3 volts battery or 9 volts battery 12 volt batteries whether it's a button type or different is a types of batteries and coming to the load sides so here this is the resistors and this is the capacitors and this is known as the inductors or all loads source and load connected in a systematic manner is known as a electric network the electric network consists of sources as well as the loads so based on the circuit configuration the current flows in the circuit okay now coming to the next electrical circuits a circuit is a closed conducting path through which an electric current either flows intended to flow as we know that the charge particle will flows whenever circuit is closed only if any vein if opens there is no current flows but exist potential difference between the 
open parts. A circuit is a closed conducting path through which an electric current either flow intend to flow. Now you can see this is a closed one. The source resistance controlling one and this is a load. This load is supplied through load is supplied through resistive controlling material. The source supply the charge particles and and load is taken from source charge particles through controlling fellow. So this is the electric circuit. Now this is the source. What is the source? A DC source or a AC source and this is the resistors controlling devices and you can see the this is the load. That means the bulb load here you can see the bulb load. I rest bulb loads. This is the resistors controlling purpose. This is the supplying purpose. It is known as the electric circuit. An electric circuit consists of sources and loads and at the same time controlling devices also. So we can say a circuit is a closed conducting path through which an electric current either flow intended to flow. Now you can see the example of this one. Here what is that one? Here what we have seen this is a active element is the source element. Now where is the load? This is a speaker is a load. And what is the controlling equipment? This is a control switches on off switch. And you can the, this is the another on off switch. This is the on off switch. Now where is the this one and this one and this one or the cap this is a capacitors this is a resistors sometimes we can use the inductors also so all passive elements so connected in the circuit that means an inter indirectly the electric circuit consists of active elements and passive elements what are the active elements it will give the charge particles from it whether it's a battery or generators passive elements it doesn't contain any source it always observe the charge particles for example resistors you can see the passive elements the resistor the passive element is the capacitor sometimes we can use the passive element is the inductor also okay this is a one example of our electrical circuit yeah. our electrical circuit consists of number of active and passive elements let us see what do you mean by the active element battery what do you mean by the what do you mean by passive element you can see later now electrical circuit elements further classified into active elements and passive elements what is the active element so you can see here active element is not but the battery this is the active element the passive element it will this is the bulb is a passive element so from source to current is flowing through here then what is the mean so this uh, it consists of one circuit consists of active element and passive element okay so this is a one example circuit sorry now let us see what do you mean with the active elements in details the voltage and current sources which supplies energy to a circuit or network are known as active elements so what are the charge particles present in that is a flow of charge particles is nothing but current the whether is a voltage source and current source will supplies to the load that is known as the active elements for example generators and batteries so this is generator sets you can see the size of the generators it may be 1 kilowatt 10 kilowatts 50 kilowatts 100 kilowatts you can see the size of the generate diesel generators and electric generators also at the same time you can see here the batteries different of the batteries 
button type batteries, flat type batteries, and different type of the batteries. These are the it will stores whatever the electrical energy inside in the form of chemical energy. Whenever we required, it convert chemical energy to electrical energy in the batteries. Whereas the generators and whatever the mechanical that is a diesel consumed, it generate the mechanical energy. That mechanical energy converted to electrical energy. As we know that energy cannot be created, cannot be destroyed, but it will convert one form to the another form. In this case, in diesel generators, you can see that the diesel generators, whatever the mechanical energy in this IC engines is converted into, there is a generator in the electrical energy in, the, in this case. Whereas, in this case, so whatever the chemical energy inside is a, uh, the HCl and lead different materials, chemical metals converted into electrical energy, chemical to electrical energy converted in cells. So, what are the input? It is converted to the electrical energy that is ready to give the passive networks. So, those are known as the active elements. Now, you can see passive elements now, the elements which consumes energy are known as passive elements. So, whereas the uh, active elements gives the electrical energy, whereas the uh, passive elements always consumes energy from the active elements. For example, the resistance, inductance and the capacitance, the resistors, capacitors, inductors are the a good examples of passive elements. So, you can see this is the one carbon resistor and this is the one inductor and it and then is the capacitor. So, these are the active elements and passive elements. Active element the voltage and current sources which supply the energy to a circuit. The passive elements the elements which consumes the energy are known as the passive elements. Now, so what is the active circuit now? Elements we have seen active element passive element now active circuit. So, what is the example? A closed electric circuit in which the active elements like voltage sources or current sources are present with passive element is known as the active circuit. Here the combination of active elements and the passive elements connected in a systematic way those network are known as the active circuit. Here you can see it this is a source E2 source and here is the E3 source and this is a E1 source the active elements and here is the R1 and R2 and R3 and R4 is the passive elements. It connected in a systematic way, they connected in a series then this circuit is known as the active circuit. Now passive circuit reverse all of active circuit. What is the definition? A circuit a closed circuit, a closed electric circuit in which the passive elements like resistors, inductors and capacitors are present alone in the circuit is known as the passive circuit. The passive circuit is shown below that means here there is no source or E1, E2, E3, E4 there is no any type of the sources. So, here only R1, R2, R3, R4 there is a resistors. So, the circuit is connected in a two loops this is a one loop and this is a second loop connector. This type of the network is known as a passive network. Okay? So, this is the example of passive network. The passive network consists of only passive elements, no active elements. Whereas, the active circuit consists of both active elements and passive elements. Okay? Just like vectors and scalars. Whereas the vectors having the magnitude and direction, that is the active elements. Where active elements, active circuit consists of active elements and passive elements, just like the vector. Where the scalar, scalar having the only magnitude, no direction. Similarly, passive elements or passive circuit. The passive circuit is nothing but equal to the 
uh, scalar quantity and active circuit is nothing but vector quantity just like you can remember the thing okay the passive circuit consists of only passive elements no active circuit elements okay so this is one example the differentiation between active and passive circuits now we have seen the active circuit and passive circuit the active circuit is a uh, formed with active and passive elements both is just like a so vector and so we whereas the passive circuit is formed with only passive elements the active elements are just like energy sources supply systems batteries dc generators whereas the passive elements are resistors inductors and capacitors and active element supplies the electrical energy to the electrical circuit network it will gives a output supply to the networks the passive elements are allows the passing through electric current it consume always consumes the whatever the energy given by the active elements these are the three comparisons between the active circuit and passive circuit i think you have the some idea now so another topic is a node and loop in a circuit if you observe in this circuit what you have seen here you can so this is a one circuit a b c d e f connected now there is no active elements but so you can see the this is a one room this is another room and as you know that kcl and kvl in basic 10th class level here you can see the so this is a for example if i connected one source here so whatever the current entering here b and the current may goes this direction and this direction that means current is coming here so this is the, the common point for this element and this element and this element so this common element is known as the node okay so node it's a junction point node or junction point we can see the node or junction junction is the connected bit suppose this is one element this is another element this is another element this is another element so here is the current is entering suppose it is a just is a common road junction from this side some vehicles and this side some vehicles some vehicles is going from this one and some vehicles will go and this direction so it is a junction this is a traffic signals this traffic signal is nothing but node or we can say node or we can say is a junction so the coming whatever the current entering into the node is living from that node so we will learn that is a kirchhoff class okay now you can see so this is a from a to b it is coming some of the charged particles for example you can say this is the current i1 and this current is coming the i2 and this current is coming to the i3 so i1 is coming and i3 is coming and at the same time i2 also coming that means i1 plus i2 plus i3 is equal to 0 that means direction so i1 plus i2 plus i3 is equal to 0 that is the sum of the current entering the node is equal to 0 that is the kirchhoff current law later we will learn that now now at this present you have to identify where is the node where is the junction point that is enough okay now coming to the this is the node now coming to the loop so in the circuit you can see here is a one loop a b c d e are connected the active network whether it is a passive or active network and what is happening the current is so going this a loop is a closed loop starting and ending so this is known as a loop or we can say the mesh okay so this is a we can say the mesh or loop 
This is a basic terminology used in our electrical circuits. What is the node? What is the junction point? What is the mesh? What is the loop? Okay. So this thing, whether it is a active network or passive network. So whether it, so here also suppose this is the one closed loop. Here also one closed loop. Okay. And here there is no node. You can say node is nothing but you can if you want to node. So whatever the current entering here and leaving. So this is the B is the node. Okay. So this is the, some basic terminology generally used uh, in our electrical networks. Now, in this class we have seen what is the elements in that one what is the passive element, what is the active element, what is the passive circuit, what is the active circuit, comparison between the active circuits and passive circuits. Okay. At the same time we have seen what is mean by the node, what is mean by the loop. So based on this one there is a frequently asked questions in exam point of view. Define the electrical network, define the electrical circuit, define the active elements and passive elements and distinguish between active and passive elements. Define active network and draw an example for the active networks. Define passive network and draw an example for passive networks. These are the few questions. I think you have the some idea about the basic things. Okay. So, this is a small class. Thank you for listening.